Joining us now with more is Florida Congressman Matt Gates and Ohio Congressman Mike Turner. Congressman Gates, I'll start with you. Uh, this investigation is getting uglier by the minute as more of this investigation comes out in a drip drip fashion. But one of the problems, uh, Congressman Gates, I have with it is this Mueller report is appearing more and more by the day like one big extended op-ed. We found out this week about the, remember the Dr. Nancy Pelosi video? We found out that the transcripts from Tr uh, President Trump's lawyer John Dowd, the actual transcripts to a voicemail to Mike Flynn, there were key words missing in this. I mean, was Mueller writing an op-ed or doing an investigation? Well, we continue to see chinks in the armor when it comes to the Mueller report, and I would point you to the great work by John Solomon, who frequently appears on this program, who pointed out that Konstantin Kalimnik, who Mueller identified as an individual connected to Russian intelligence, was actually a source of the State Department working with our government. And so if Robert Mueller wasn't able to ascertain who was spying for the Russians and who was collecting and reporting intelligence to our own government, I think it would call into question substantial portions of his work. But there are three real levels of what Mr. Durham's doing that are important. The FISA abuses, the lies before courts that should not have occurred. Also, the illegal leaks. Your point about James Baker really highlights the extent to which, under Jim Comey's leadership, the FBI wasn't conducting investigations and looking for the truth. They were trying to shape public opinion. And finally, and I think most notably, the corrupt origins of this investigation inside the Obama White House, where we weren't just violating the rights of our own citizens in our country. We were actually off trying to pressure our allies like Britain to collect intelligence on people that we would have had no ability to do here in the United States. All of that together spells bad news for the people in the Obama White House. Yeah, I want to get back to Kalimnik, but Congressman Turner, I'll go to you first on uh, kind of a related topic here. You're up on the Hill. Obviously, I'm not. You're seeing what's going on every day. Do you sense a tide is turning feeling up there on the Hill where the Democrats realize that there's something going on here, that there was clearly, this was not a, to quote Susan Rice, by the book FBI investigation here? I, I mean, listen, your colleagues up there on the Hill are Democrats. We may not agree with them, but they're not stupid. They have to know that there were some severe abnormalities here. You think they're getting worried that this is coming out and it may uh, rebound on them? Well, Dan, one of the things I think they're worried about is the new authorities that the Attorney General Barr has with respect to declassification. Because you remember, it's not just these investigations, the or inve or origins of the investigations. It's also the American public getting the truth and getting the actual information. Remember when Michael Cohen came to testify before the Intelligence Committee, which I serve on, there were a number of leaks of how Michael Cohen's testimony was going to sink the president and leaks about what was in his testimony. And, you know, the story sort of came to a screeching halt the moment that the transcript was actually released and people saw what was in it. And I think that's part of the aspect here that's going to be really important as the inspector general, as the attorney general, as they move forward with this investigation of the origins of this, which I had to live through on through the Intelligence Committee. And they're certainly going to find not only holes in everyone's stories, but they're going to release this information to the public so we can read it themselves and see that, that not only was there no there there, but there was some real misdeeds done. Uh, it's very obviously, I think, um, clear to the American public that Comey, Clapper, Brennan, and Baker, when they stand on their television sets now and are clearly anti-Trump bias, um, th that bias predated uh, their leaving government. It was certainly there when they were over these agencies that were so important and that were targeted at American citizens. Congressman Gates, on that point you made about Konstantin Kalimnik, this is just really disturbing. So we find out in the Mueller report that there are real sins of omission here. That what Mueller, and, and I don't want to leave Weissman out of this. We should be clear. Andy Weissman's definitely in vice fingerprints are all over this. You brought up the fact that, you know, that, that, that they damn Manafort in the report for having these discussions with Kalimnik. Whether they're appropriate or not is up for you to decide. He wasn't charged with anything for those conversations. But Kalimnik was a source for the State Department in the Obama administration. And then we find out this week as well that one of Mueller's confidential informants in the case, it's an allegation, of course, but apparently was arrested for child pornography, of all things. This was Mueller's source. I mean, this report is getting uglier by the minute. And it continues a trend where if there's information that's not damaging to the president, you get these deep state actors to try to keep that information away from the public view. So, again, you see that in the Mueller report where the Kalimnik information was not cast in an accurate light. But even before then, in the fraud that occurred before a secret court with no defense attorney present, you had the Department of Justice and the FBI presenting information that seemed to indicate that George Papadopoulos was off colluding with Russians when the reality is they had 
had a transcript where the, the Brits had run intel against Papadopoulos, and Papadopoulos denied ever having engaged in these unlawful acts. And so they're presenting information to try to reinforce their bias rather than putting forward the information that would have spared our country from this 22 months of division because from the very beginning it was obvious to people that there wasn't collusion but yet they allowed the investigation to persist. Congressman Turner, so we've seen some uh, information's come out but we've seen very little accountability. I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. And I get emails a lot from people, from listeners, and I, I, I see them on Twitter all the time as well. They're upset. Uh, they see people getting off. There's an allegation this week of a senior FBI official accused of leaking. Uh, the, of course, the DOJ didn't want to prosecute that case. Why does it appear that any time it involves a Trump-associated person, Mike Flynn, George Papadopoulos, Paul Manafort, that the heavy hand of justice comes down on him hard? Early morning raids, severe prison sentences. Paul Manafort uh, ridiculously is in solitary confinement in Rikers Island. I was a cop in the NYPD. You don't want to be in Rikers Island. No less than solitary in Rikers Island. Yet when it comes to people involved with the DOJ where it could negatively implicate a Democrat or someone in the FBI involved in the spying, they seem to get off. Are we ever going to get accountability? Well, the inequity certainly does seem uh, very troubling. And I can tell you from the perspective of the Intelligence Committee, and certainly as you're aware from the Oversight Committee, criminal referrals have been made uh, as a result of the both inaccurate statements that people have made, lying under oath. Uh, the, I believe this, things that go right to the heart of the inception of this investigation. Uh, but you're right. The, the people around uh, Donald Trump were, were clearly pursued for the purposes of trying to turn them against the president and to say things that turned out not to be true. I mean, the Mueller investigation found no collusion. Uh, they did not conclude. They, they found that there were no evidence, ultimately, uh, to conclude that the president had committed a crime on obstruction. Uh, but yet they put tremendous pressure on the people around them, including ruining their lives and pursuing them uh, with criminal prosecution. But there are criminal referrals that have been made that I think go right to the heart of, of people being dishonest, uh, the, utilizing their bias and abusing their power. And I think the attorney general is going to undertake this. And I think the American public are going to get answers. Can also, I, I think we need to change our laws. Can I just I follow up quickly with you on that? Listen, I, I understand and I totally sure. get it that you're not, you can't go out and physically put handcuffs on. That's not your job. You're a legislator. You can make the referrals. I totally get that. But I think the frustration is, 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 you know, is there any pressure that we can put on the DOJ and people to do their jobs? It seems like these inequities are really to, leading to a real imbalance. I mean, the republic only matters if people have fidelity to, and, and to it and believe that that Constitution means something. But it seems to mean something for one side, but mean absolutely nothing to the other side of the political debate. And I guess my question, better phrase, is well, what from your side can be done about this? Well, I think well, at the I Inspector General's investigation, the Attorney General Barr's Attorney investigation. General. Sorry, I was just giving a quick follow-up to Turner. I'll go to you, you Congressman Gates, next. I'll give you the last word. My apologies. Congressman Sorry. Turner. Uh, my understanding is, you know, if you look to the Attorney General Barr's investigation, the Inspector General's investigation, these are going to get to the heart of were their laws broken, were their procedures broken. You know, clearly things were not done by the book. Clearly there was abuses of process. We're going to get the data and information from which okay. those investigations can lend themselves to the criminal prosecutions okay. that are the heart of some of the referrals that have come from the Intelligence Committee and the uh, Government Oversight Committee. Thank you. Congressman Gates, I'll give you the last word on that. What do you think can be done? I mean, people yeah, are really getting frustrated out there. The American people are sick and tired of a double standard that seemed to pave a yellow brick road to exoneration for Hillary Clinton when there were clearly crimes committed there, while at the same time casting these aspersions on Donald Trump without a basis as a result of bias. The only reason why we haven't had people thrown in jail yet is because Jeff Sessions did a terrible job as attorney general. Now we've got a real attorney general, Mr. Durham's on the case, and the information we have now seems to indicate that at every level of this corruption, there is going to be accountability and there's going to be a restoration of justice and the rule of law, and I can't wait for it. Congressman Gates, Congressman Turner, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.